Bruce. How about another round for Bruce Day Tuesday? Here is Drez and Huck. <laughs> All right, it is round two of Bruce Day Tuesday, and it is Drez as well as... Oh, you went off the mic that I, time. I did, because I, well, I got to... <laughs> you got to get your beer. It was yeah. for a good cause. I know. For a good reason. Uh, as always, Huck from Huck Beer, Huck's Beer Buzz is joining me. And a special guest today, we have Doug Brewer, head brewer. Can I go as far as to say head brewer? Absolutely. All right. Over there from uh, Apocalypse Ale Works. Uh, happy to have them in for Virginia Craft Beer Month. We're trying to highlight Virginia Craft Beer this month, as it is uh, Virginia Craft Beer Month. You know? That's a good Drink, reason. Drinking local, man. And if it's, it is Virginia Craft Beer and Month. And what's fantastic, I mean, we everybody loves a good craft beer. And what's awesome is that Virginia has... No shortage of that. No, it's growing all the time. We just asked him a question before the break. Oh, yeah. Are we going to get back to that? I mean, yeah, he told go. us the answer, but we should find out why. So, so Hardywood, yeah. yeah, you're a fan. Big fan. Um, you know, they they have beer that they age, and they do it properly. Um, barrel aging can be shortcut, but it shouldn't be, and mm-hmm. they don't. Um, the quality of their beers, you know, and I have to say, give a shout-out to the Barrel House, too. The Barrel House does Dark Hollow, and they really know how to. Barrel House. You should listen to our last week's show about the Sours <laughs> and the Petrus. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. We don't talk about that. Yeah, we don't even talk about that on air, <laughs> but that's funny. That was funny. But, uh, but food, yeah. Food orders. I'm just a big fan. I'm a big fan of big beers. Yeah, okay. I'm and a, big a, lo- fan a lot of the big breweries, uh, you know, they're, they're going to cater more to the middle of the road so they can sell more. Yes. Right. That's. Uh, I had an argument about it. You know, they're like, you know, well, we're going to put the, where are you at the beers on the shelf? Well, we put the beers on the shelf to sell the best. Well, or did you put the beers on the shelf and then they sold the best because they were on the shelf? I'm not, I'm confused. Yeah. So I want the beer. Which that, came first. The right. Chi- you know, the chicken or the egg. I want the beer that's best. So that's why I go a lot of times to the source and the yeah. source came yeah. to us this time. Which and is it's always good to go to the source. So if you can go to the source in any way, you should, you know, you could, they have the brew trail, right? They have the brew trail and, yeah. and, uh, you know, I think the Hardywood will continue to grow, and you know, well, aren't they? The, they grow, they're building a big thing out in some county near Richmond. Uh, actually, their satellite brewery is going to be in Charlottesville. Oh, I thought yeah. it was going to be like in mm. Chesterfield. They're, they're, they're in <laughs> Richmond. Oh, that's close. Right now, and they're opening up uh, uh, right off of uh, the main road in, in Charlottesville. Cool, nice. Yeah. Also in Charlottesville, I'm just going to throw a plug in for a buddy of mine is Beer Run. Beer, they're, beer. they're opening one in Charlottesville? Yeah, there is a beer run. Oh, it's a sipper thing. It's a bottle shop and restaurant. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, like, the best is it beer. the same beer run from Mississippi that you no, sent me to? No, different no, guys? Different guys, yeah. The guy guys. there, Justin, he's Justin. their new beer buyer. You mean there's more than one beer run? Yeah. I can't believe it. I make it. a beer run every day. <laughs> every day. Yeah. Every day. Sometimes well, it's a free drink. Well, uh, shoot, we got sidetracked by that question. What, uh, what am I drinking here? You just oh, poured yeah. another beer in the glass. We don't even know what it is. This is the Lustful Maiden. Lustful, oh, and, and the well, only thing better than one lustful maiden is two. <laughs> Mercy, uh, lustful maiden. Uh, give lust, us a little background maiden, about it. Lustful maiden is actually a recipe that gave me the, my first blue ribbon as a home brewer in the Dominion Cup, hmm. 1996. Yay! It's, it's a little darker. Yeah, uh, with applause. Yeah, Belgian. that's a clap. I only have one hand. Yeah. I have a beer. Yeah, in the other we know side. how you do that. It is a Belgian double. Mm. And Dubel, Dubel? it was it was a, a beer that introduced me to what real craft beer was in 1990. So so we call it a it's a double, Is not it a double, double or double. I yeah. always said double. I've always said double. Double. Yeah, I've always said double. But doobel. It, it doesn't matter just as long as it tastes good. As long as you're buying it. Yeah. I'm gonna call it a double. I think that's yeah. more fun. Yeah, it's doable. It's totally doable. doable. This, <laughs> beer, <laughs> this beer is more than doable. Yeah. <laughs> that's how to remember stuff. But man, so this was this was like your first. So this is what you got you into got me to in craft room. beer, huh? I had a roommate at the time that worked in Belgium, and uh, he brought this beer it's over. It's a long commute. It is, <laughs> but it was worth it. He brought a beer over back to America that was actually in a wine bottle, and it had a cork and a cage. And I'm like, that can't be beer. Can't no, be beer. Come on, man. What do you he think? says, well, no, it, it's some, it's it's what the monks make. I'm like. Monks really make beer? I mean, I read about that, but is it true? He's Why do you think they're so they're chill? chill? Yeah, yeah they, they, they got their women, quite, they cool, got their jobs, they, they got their good food. <laughs> they got something. They got to have something. Yeah. So that particular bottle was uh, She May Grand Reserve. And uh, when I tried it, I'm like, okay, this. Big fan you, of You Chimay. couldn't buy anything like this uh, uh, in Lynchburg uh, for until two decades later. 
So I figure, okay, I've got a degree in biology, a degree in chemistry. I've got to figure out how to make this stuff because I can't buy it. And that's really what started my quest in 1990. So people ask me, I say, Doug, what's your favorite beer? Uh, and it's easy. I mean, I love all the beers we make, but Lustful Maiden is what started it all. And there you go. It, it, we were honored uh, in 2013. We'd been open for five months. And about 6.30 in the morning on July 4th, my phone started ringing off the hook. I'm like, what the hell are people doing? Calling me at 5, 6.30 in the morning. And it turned out that this beer won the gold medal in the world competition. And you hadn't the, heard yet. The U.S. Open. No. I didn't expect it. You know, it's our first shot out. Game. Nice. Nice. And uh, so uh, we were proud of it. Well, man, mad props on that, man. And uh, And so that started your quest back in the early 90s. And then... You developed, obviously, you know, you started Apocalypse Ale. You said that was just three years ago, Doma, but I guess you were doing, your love for craft beer actually yeah. had you open, a, like, a supply store or yeah. something. Uh, 1995, I opened up a shop called Pints of Plenty. Pints of Plenty. And Pints of Plenty is still in existence today. Um, now we have an ABC license, so we carry about 600 different types of beer. And uh, we also have a growler fill station, and we teach people how to make beer every Thursday night from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Uh, we teach people how to make craft beer. Is that out there near Apocalypse? Uh, right next door. Right next door. Right awesome, next door. Man. Oh yeah. So, you know, uh, it, it kills me when I hear a lot of people say that brewing is so challenging and so difficult. It's really I easy. can do it. It's obviously <laughs> yeah. not hard. It really is easy yeah. to make great beer out of the out of the gates um, if you have the proper techniques of, of cleaning. Any anybody can do it. Uh, of course. Uh, the real beauty about brewing is it's a perfect blend between science and art. Mm-hmm. And the science is there for anybody to, to look at and duplicate it. I mean, these are known factors, but the art is just like a great chef. Yep. You know, knowing what, when to throw that in, what grains to put in, <laughs> what yeast to use, what fermentation temperatures to use. But there's a lot, of, there is a lot of information out there. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I read, you know, I can, I, I can read and do things. I'm that guy. So that's how I learned to make beer. Oh, I, I had to be because, you know, uh, back in the 90s, I, I read everything I could. I always like to say it's like making soup in a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> well, un- unlike my customers today that make great beer off the first first round, I made a lot of bad beer. <laughs> you know? I mean, it, I guess that's – and that's just how it is, man. You got to use it. So any of you out there that are thinking about brewing your own or maybe you're already brewing your own and it's not going so well, it's really it's a try-try-again sort of a thing, right? I mean, obviously uh, – un- Unless you have somebody to guide you through it to begin with. I mean, even if you do, there's still room for improvement. Always room for yeah. improvement. From, and any professional that tells you that it's not room for improvement – you know, I'd worry about them. Oh, absolutely. There's always room for yeah. improvement. And, and, and experimentation, I mean, even on top of that. Oh, yeah. You know, you, even when I make a good beer, I've, you know, I'm not made anywhere near the number of beers you've made, but I've made 50 beers, which for a home brewer is not bad. That's really good. Yeah. You know, when you have an excellent job and, you know, family. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but I've made some beers, you know, and then I'll tweak them, and sometimes it goes, well, sometimes not so much. I once <laughs> made a large batch of some beer that I thought was going to be really, really good, and I took it to a party of drunk people and still ended up pouring it out. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Man. That's bad when you get rejected by drunk people. Well, I, was, I rejected it already. That's why I gave it to the drunk people. I normally don't share my beer a lot. Yeah, that happens. Though. I keep it close. It happens. I make it for me. So, uh, so when it comes to Apocalypse, uh, obviously it's Virginia Craft Beer Month, so we want to highlight you, man. You got some great beers, and I know there's plenty more than just the two that we've had here. Um, whereabouts in the NRV can we find that? Uh, you can find these things. We're growing in this area, uh, but you can expect places like the Cellar, Sharkies, Mellow Mushroom, mm-hmm. great customer buyers in Blacksburg. Uh, you know, Tap House, uh, Patrick at the Tap House. He's is, a good is boy. Start. He is really so good. Guy. Are all these in bottles as well? We have six of our beers in bottles, and they are seasonal. And then we have our two flagships uh, that are in cans, and that's the Golden Censor and the Red Apocalypse, which is the base beer of the, the Grapefruit Apocalypse. What are the What are the six bottles? Because I didn't even realize y'all were – I always see the cans, but I never didn't even realize y'all were yeah. in bottles. What do you got bottled? Uh, Lustful Maiden. Uh, we do – That's the, what we're sipping now, by the way. Cheers. Now. Delicious. That the, was not a. That was, uh, the winter, uh, winter. Cheers in my microphone over here. Like, hey, 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 <laughs> that's a new thing. We're gonna start doing that. <laughs> the winter snack, uh, which is our uh, holiday uh, stout, uh, the six seal chocolate stout, 
uh, which we were honored to get the silver medal to U.S. Open last week on that. And we also have the heavy red horseman. So is this religious? It is. Okay. Absolutely. It's I mean, it's, it's religious to me. Yeah. Well, I'm not, yeah. I mean, the whole apocalypse thing. You went to. You, you went got, to. Uh, got a lot of that. Which book of the Acts? No. The Re- Revelation. Revelation. Went to yes. Revelations and you got the yeah. seven seals. No, okay. okay. And actually, I'm the logo, it. the logo that I have, uh, everything on this logo means something. The apocalypse logo? Yeah. And you can look at the exact details of what it means, or I can tell you guys here in the next 10 minutes. But uh, the end of bad beer dot com is, is the, the website. End of, bad end of bad beer dot com. Yeah. <laughs> that is I like the apocalypse. That. I like it. That's so, the good. That's the, the kind of apocalypse that we like, right? Yeah. But that's uh, that's what it's Satan's that's beer. Yeah. Cool. Bad beer. We need good stuff. And there was a, a new there, beer. I had a question ready. Now. Sorry, man. I'm just all over. I'm session beering over here, man. Yeah, you all here. Hug session. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, I know. I had one of your beers a weekend or two ago. Uh, my buddy had a growler full of it. I think it was your ras- sinful raspberry, raspberry sinful blonde, Ras- raspberry sinful blonde. Uh, that was pretty damn good. You know, uh, <laughs> it, it, it is something that Huck may not appreciate because it's only five percent. Oh, uh, but it, it is a uh, it's a great beer for this time of year, summertime. Light, like sometimes I need to fruity. hydrate. Yeah, it, hydrate. And you know, right next to Gatorade. And right. to, to quote, to I like qu- it better than either. <laughs> to quote my friend at the party, he said, "This this one right here, it's a panty dropper." I knew you were going to yeah, say it that. Was, Dres. It was. It's, it's definitely. It's a that. beer that all females will love. Even if, if you don't like beer, you will drink this beer. You'll be like, "Oh, oh, this is so good." I well, well I, when, talk about that fr- that juice box. People, you put that in yeah, the juice people box. say, you know, I don't like beer. I'm like, I can find a beer you like. Oh, without a doubt, guaranteed. Well, and this is one of them. So definitely keep an. Uh, I'm gonna put that on the keep list. It, of keep an eye out for that. Like. Yeah, it's it's one that uh, I think everybody would like. It's just it's all around. It's a light. It's fruity. It's perfect for this time of year, like you said. Um, that was just that was the delicious beer. So well, the one thing that uh, I will point out though with our fruit beers, our fruit beers will never be sweet. I mean. My wife wanted me to, to make a couple of fruit beers this year, and I said, I'm fine with fruit beers, but they're not going to be sweet. Now he's sleeping so. on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll get the aroma. You'll get the flavor of the grapefruit for Grapefruit Apocalypse and the, and so, the, so the have raspberry. You been, have you been to the Funkatorium? Sweet. They make some fruit beers. Uh, down in, in Colorado? Asheville. Asheville. No, I haven't been there yet. You need to go. <laughs> yeah. And then the brewery would be the other place that makes some fruit beers. They're interesting those yeah. are the two those are the two best fruit, <laughs> fruit sour beers thanks for the compliment the you're country. welcome <laughs> yeah. yeah delicious all right we've, i would say speaking of which man I, I guess tap. i'll take the lead on this one man all right bro. uh so this is the uh apocalypse ale works lustful maiden very different uh lacing wise this is in fact the quite quite the opposite quite the flip-flop not much at all but it's okay uh it still tastes very good it's got that dark color, a very, very nice aroma, I would say for sure. And hang on before I give my final rating. We're hanging, we're hanging, we're all hanging here. I'm looking. It's like copper colored. Yeah, it is. Got that very nice, nice color, dark copper. You know, I'm. Uh, this is the Belgian du- Double, which frankly I thought I was gonna like more than the the grateful or the grapefruit. Uh, just because. Excuse me. I love. I usually like Belgian beers. It's a little different than I thought it was gonna be. Still very good, still very drinkable. What's the ABV on this? 7.5. Still a good session. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right at there. Right at that edge. Right you in know, there. You know, like I said, I, I, I still really like it. I don't know if I like it quite as good as the grapefruit. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a 4.25. You know what? Actually, it's probably just about as good. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, I'll give no, it no, a, no, no. Stick, stick with your guns. I'll go with 4. Point, all right, you're right. I should stick, stick, stick with your 4.25, but I will say this. Your raspberry... Sinful blonde, sinful blonde raspberry, whichever whichever order you put those words in that beer, um, I can't remember off the top of my head what rating I gave it on tapped, but it must have been a five. So I, I'm like I'm like Huck, who will give you a five right here and there. I have given you a five, I'm sure, and that's not even just because you were in the studio. That was because that was a damn good beer, and it was what needed to be drank at the time. So either way, I mean, above a four is pretty good in my book. Just to give you a, a basis with my untap ratings, I think you're, du- I think you're double dipping here. 
I'm, I'm just going to get How's here. that? I just, well, you know, you're like rating two beers at once. But that's okay. Yeah, I'm it's just okay. giving him a plug. Well, because he was kind of, I'm, I didn't want to put this on air. You've but been he, known to give me a hard time. I'm just returning the favor. Well, he, I feel like I need to untap it because he was kind enough to bring me a growler of it. <laughs> oh, I guess, see? Those, you, so there's you secret the, beer. Did you secret see the, beer. I just didn't want to share it with I you. I understand. <laughs> I understand. I got a lady friend that wants to try it. So there I you go. Say, well, I'll come along and we'll have like a three date. You're not invited. No, I'm not. I'm never invited. I'm never Never get invited. <laughs> is she aware it's a panty dropper? Yeah. I think or is that a proven fact? She's gonna find out. I think it'll be I'll let you know. <laughs> I hope she's not listening. <laughs> <I'll let> you... <laughs> well, good but luck she probably that. is. Yeah. Anyway, well right. she's probably uh, very nice. Take the lead. What, that... what do you feel, brother? I'm Wait, feeling, feeling this very, okay. So I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna give you a little background here because you know, I'm gonna bump it to a four or five because of the name. The name's right. great. The name is awesome. I'm a, well. I'm a big fan of Belgian beers. But Dubel is not my style. Quadruple is not my style, except for except for Hardy Woods Bourbon Barrel oh, Age. Fantastic. You know, I don't drink that beer except if somebody says it's a Hardy Wood Bourbon Barrel Age Quadruple. How could I'm you all not? Over. Yeah, how could I, you not drink? I it? am a triple guy. <laughs> I love triples. Okay, because triples are all session beers. Because if they're not ten percent, we're not even making it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Real quick, I'm gonna stop you right there. I'm stopped. Um. I'm with you on the triple stuff, but for our listeners out there that aren't familiar with how the Bel- how Belgian beers, you, you got the double, the triple, quad. Give us the lowdown on that. What's the deal with that? Well, what's let's the get difference that from the brewer? Yeah. What's the difference? Yeah, actually, what's the uh, difference? It used they used to be charged uh, taxes based on the percentage of alcohol. So we've we've identified it a little bit more uh, for competitions of what a quad is, what a triple is, what a double is. But originally, it was a tax rate. Hmm. Uh, ah. that they imposed upon the brewers Excellent. based on the percentage of alcohol. Excellent. So then, I'm glad we don't have that. So what does today. it break down to now? What makes it a double? Well, I'll give you triple. my opinion. Is a quadruple is a little bit sweeter. It's usually higher, higher in alcohol. ABV, around 11%. Right. And then your, your triple is usually more in the, you know, it's kind of, I don't want to say pale they're, ale, but it's kind of like a, a high a high alcohol Gold drier ale. beer, yeah. Uh, typically, they'll uh, a lot of triples will use coriander, right, and uh, orange peel in them. Yeah, and then uh, your spices, du, your dubels are darker and, and more malty. A little chalk, more chocolatey. Hmm. Right. Yeah. What about the quads? They're sweet. Yeah, the, the, the quads are, uh, and quads do very well bottle conditioned and aged. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, they just what? get better and better. But the the famous the the one the the whole the the, uh, the light up to is the uh, West Lettervin. Uh, West Lettervin is a great cream of the crop. Yeah, oh, and yeah. also the, the Rochefort Ten. Yeah, the Rochefort Ten. What ABV or quads? So just as a at? quick kick, and I probably shouldn't even say this, but you know the seller has half price uh, inter- international beers on Sunday evenings, which I'm known to be there at 6 p.m. when that starts <laughs> in the downstairs bar. If you want to join I'm coming us, coming back, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> half price yeah. tips. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. back to my rating. But thank you for that. Yeah, Interesting. It's a pleasure. Of course, the tax man always gets involved in this. Unfortunately. Damn the tax a man. A lot of history comes from the tax So, anyway, man. I'm going to give your beer a another five. Four, two, five. Oh, low balling. Well, because. He just kicked you in the balls. I did not. <laughs> you can't say balls on the radio. I just hey, did. I, I'm just glad it's not a scale of 10. I'm, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm just not, saying, you know, I'm not a big fan of a Dubai. And this is good. But like you say, we're not like a little, you know, brewer. We're like a little lace in there. Yeah. You work on that? You know, that's it, just it, mean. It, it, I'm just being <laughs> mean now. Don't even it, answer that. I'm my, just being mean. My bad pour in the growler. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to blame the growler on that. Yeah, one. or maybe you yeah. didn't wash it out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it tastes great. Yeah. Tastes great, less filling. <laughs> no, it's pretty filling, actually. It's real filling. It is. But anyway, I hope I don't. Okay, I'm going to do like Dreads. I'm going to give it a four or five now. No, no, no. No, I did. I just did. I won't tell you what I originally gave you because I had it before. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So I'm being good to you. Eddie, Trust no, me. No, you man. can go look if it, you're on Untapped. It's an honor. No, it's an honor Thank for you, you to Doug, be here. for coming in, man. We really appreciate it. You uh, know, I'm just going to throw this out before you go away. Real quick. Okay, Doug's. I've only never met a Doug I didn't like. That's true. Just Doug, it's like a Rudy. Out. Have you ever met a Ru- no, like Rudy's ex- Rudy? No, Rudy's. Well, there's politicians. Other than that. Hey, yeah. get out of here. Get out of here. But, Rudy, but not, you're hey, a, Doug's. Doug's are good. Doug's solid guy, man. I really do appreciate you coming in and sharing your beer with us for Virginia Craft Beer Month. And, of course, if you want to uh, want to go visit Apocalypse Sale Works, Forest, Virginia, you want to throw out the address real quick. Uh, 1257 Plugs, Burn Bridge Road. Plugs galore. Yeah, we have um, a beer garden that you know, we seat about 300 people in the backyard, and and uh, we it's just a fun place to be. We're dog friendly. We're kid friendly. 
uh, as long as the kids are as friendly as the dogs, you know, all in good shape. Uh, but the other thing I'll say is go Hokies. All right. Woo! There. Now we're getting now there we're in the right neighborhood for that. Yeah. Apocalypse yeah. Ale Works. Uh, find them on Facebook and all that stuff. And uh, uh, End of Bad Beer. Dot com was that what it was end of bad beer dot com well thanks again doug for coming in and hook as always i appreciate you joining me on tuesdays there's another Glad one for the books we'll uh we'll take a quick break we'll get back to the tunes right here on 105.3 the bear stick around